Hey, eighth graders. I am having to use my phone to record this little lesson today because my iPad is being difficult. So, um, I hope this, this works out for us. So we are um, moving into solving systems of equations with elimination part two. So, um, there it starts and it says, you probably know how to solve the first two systems below, but what about the third? So remember last week when we started, we are working with um, two equations that had matching but opposite coefficients. And so in that first equation, the twos were our matching opposites. One's positive, one's negative, but they're both twos. In the second one, we have matching, but they're not opposites. And so we have to multiply through by a negative. But in the third problem, we don't have any matching um, or any opposites actually. And so the cool thing is, is that you can multiply equations by any number we'd like. So we can get them to match by finding, um, a common factor that they share. So I'm going to go through these now, technically it's, it can be kind of tricky because every single problem has four different ways we could do this. Okay. So for example, in this one, you could get your X's to cancel or you can get your Y's to cancel. So you can decide to multiply the top equation or the bottom equation or both equations. And it just has to play out, um, whichever one you think is the easiest path. You might not always take the easiest path, but you still will get the right answer if you do it correctly. So when I look at equations, there's a couple things that I look for. The first thing that I look for is, um, if I already have an opposite, because that means they don't have to multiply through by negative. So for example, I have an opposite here with my three. Now, the other thing that I notice is that three can be multiplied by four to get to 12. So I can take this first equation. And if I just multiply that by a four, my new equation is negative 12 X. And then make sure you distribute it to all three terms. Negative 12x plus 32y equals, and then 26, 52, negative 52. And then your bottom equation stayed the same. So that's positive 12x plus 6y equals negative 24. And so now, if you look at that, we have our negative and positive 12. So there are matching opposite coefficients and we can use elimination to solve the problem. Okay. So we go to this, these cancel like we want. We can just add those together and we get 38 y equals and then these are both negative so actually what you do is you add them together so four and two is six five six seven seventy six and then we can divide by 38 and our y equals two and then just like we did last week you just put the two into one of the two equations it doesn't really matter which one. Um, I usually try to stay with positive values, positive numbers. So I might take that bottom equation and I would do 12x plus six instead of y. I'm gonna put the two in equals negative 24. Okay, so 12x plus 12 equals negative 24 minus the 12 minus the 12. 12x equals negative 36. Divide by 12, divide by 12. x equals negative 3. So my solution is negative 3, positive 2. Okay, so I always think of these as a puzzle. Um, in the next problem, I have both positives, both, both negatives, but right away I noticed that 7 can go into 14 but I can't just multiply by a two. I have to multiply through by a negative two. And the reason is, is because I have two negatives. So I am gonna just multiply my, doesn't matter which one, multiply through by a negative two. And what this does, it gives me negative 10x plus 
14y equals negative 10. The bottom equation stays the same. I don't do anything to it. Then I need to combine them. These cancel like we want. Negative 10 positive 8 gives us a negative 2x. This gives me a negative 16. Divide by negative 2 x equals positive 8. Then I'm going to go back to one of my original equations. Does not matter which one and put that in. So I'm going to do the top equation just because it's smaller numbers. Five times eight, we can do that and get 40. Move the 40 to the other side. Negative seven y equals negative 35. Divide by a negative seven, divide by a negative seven. Y equals positive five. So your solution is eight, five. Okay, so those ones aren't too bad. The next type of problem, sometimes you need to turn, change both equations. So these ones weren't too bad because we just were able to find, oh, seven goes into 14, three goes into 12. But down here in the bottom, they don't necessarily um, go into each other. And so you can decide what you want them to have. So for example, my x, two and three can both go into six. Three and four can both go into 12. So I just pick the one that are opposite. So for example, here, the two, the two um, they are both opposite, so it doesn't really even matter. Um, I'll just go with the x's. So I'm going to multiply the top by a 3 and the bottom by a 2. Okay, so 3 times 2x, I get 6x minus 9y equals 3 times 6. Some people forget that last one is a negative 18. Then your bottom, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6x, which is what we want plus 8y equals 22. Now we've got those matching opposite coefficients. They cancel. You get negative 1y equals positive 4. Divide by negative 1, y equals negative 4. Okay, we got to put that back in. Put it back in for one of your original equations. Doesn't matter which one. Maybe I'll do the top one. 2x minus 3 times negative 4, 2x plus 12 equals negative 6, minus 12 from both sides, 2x equals negative 18, divide by 2, divide by 2, our x equals negative 9. So negative 9, negative 4. Okay, need more room here. Okay, the next problem is, we'll look at it for a second. They could both go into 12, they could both go into 18, doesn't matter which one. One of them does have to be a negative. I'm going to do my y's this time just to show you doesn't matter which one. So this, I'm going to multiply by... Uh, positive 2. And the bottom one, I'm going to multiply by a negative 9. So I get um, 8x minus 18y equals 10. And then on the bottom, I get negative 27x plus 18y equals 9. And I'm going to take and add these together. These cancel like we want. 27, you're really taking away 8. So that brings us to negative 19x equals positive 19. Divide both by negative 19. x equals 1. Then you can put that into either one of the equations. Pick that bottom equation, I think. 3 times 1 minus 2y equals negative 1. 
3 minus 2y equals negative 1, minus 3 minus 3, negative 2y equals negative 4, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, y equals 2. 1, 2 is your solution. So these ones aren't too bad. Okay. So here it says when solving systems like the first one below, it can be helpful, helpful to find at least one common multiple to keep your number small, but it's okay if you don't. Let's get some practice on deciding what should be done to solve the systems below. So we're not actually going to solve these. We're just going to kind of go through practicing making decisions. So let's see. When I look here, I see four and six and I see 12 and eight. So you want to try to think of the smaller the numbers just because it makes things a little bit easier if you do that. So I know like four and six both go into 12. So I would multiply one equation by maybe a negative three and the other equation by a positive two. And then they would, one would be a negative 12, one would be positive 12. So you don't have to multiply it. Um, you don't have to multiply both of them, but um, you can just kind of pay attention to that. So I'll go down to the next one. Um, nine and six, they both go into 36. Five and four both go into 20. I probably go with the five and the four. Um, they're already opposite, so that's kind of nice. So this one I'd multiply by a four. This one I'd multiply by a five. Okay. Up here, uh, three and two both go into six, so I could multiply and I or I could just do the bottom one and multiply that by a negative two. So there are lots of different options. So maybe I would just do the bottom one. And this one would be a negative two because then that would give me a negative eighteen. Here, the fours match, so I just want to multiply through by a negative. I would choose that top equation because then I get rid of the negative 7 and the negative 20, which is kind of nice. Next equation, 7 and 8. They go into 56, but 10 and 6, they go into 30. So I could multiply this one by a 5 and this one by a 3. That makes it so we don't get it to 60 or 56. We get it to 30, which is nicer a number. Um, the next one I've got three and 14. So, or 10 and 11. So 10 isn't going to go anything until 110. Let's think of 14. Um, I'm just trying to think here. Let's sometimes it, they take a little bit. So 14, um, times three. It's 42. <coughs> so I guess on this one, the smallest way to do it would to be multiply through here by probably a negative 3. And the bottom one, I'd have to multiply through by 14. So last one on this edge here, 4 and 10, they can both go into 20. 5 and 11 won't get into anything until 55. So I'd multiply this one by a 5 to get to 20 and this one by a two, and there then they'd be matching opposite coefficients. So there are more than one, ooh, last one. Oh, these ones already match. So you don't multiply by anything. You just would cancel those out, okay? So the last thing we're gonna do is this word problem. Um, first, we're gonna set up our system. So on Monday, Jack bought two burgers and three fi fries for 11.25. So right away, I'm gonna make burgers X, fries Y. On Tuesday, he bought seven burgers and five fries for thirty-two fifty. Find the price of each item. Okay, so on one day, he bought two burgers plus three fries, and it costs a total of eleven twenty-five. On Tuesday, he bought seven burgers plus five fries, and it was thirty-two fifty. So they're both in standard form. That's one reason why I would go to use elimination. They're both in standard form. What would I get them to to cancel? Um, I could probably get those to 14 and those to 15. It doesn't really matter which one. So I'll take these ones. Multiply this by a negative 7 
and this one by a positive 2. So negative 7 times 2, negative, here, I'll do it over here actually, negative 14x minus 21y equals 11.25 times 7, 78, negative 78, 75. On the bottom, positive 14x plus 10y equals, and if I double this, 32.65. Okay, my x's cancel. Then I can subtract the other ones. I get 11y, and that's negative. And then 78 minus 65, I get 13.75. Then I'm going to divide both sides by a that negative 11. Oh, this was a negative 2. And I get $1.25. So my y is $1.25. Well, what's y? y is my fries. So the fries equal $1.25. So now I need to know what the burgers Okay, so I'm going to put it back into one of the equations, doesn't matter which one. I'm going to start with my top one, I think. So I get 2x plus 3 times my y, which is $1.25, equals 11.25. Then I'm going to subtract. And I get 750, divide by 2, divide by 2, my x equals 325, or 375. So, my x is a burger. And my fry is $1.25. Which is reasonable. A burger is going to be more expensive than fry. Okay, so I hope that you guys were able to see this video. I know it's kind of vertical, so I hope that doesn't give you trouble. This is your guys' homework right here. Front and back, just like we did before. I hope you guys are having a great, had a great weekend. It was a beautiful day out today, and um, we will hope to see you Monday.